Hillary, tell us a little bit about Greater Portland Landmarks. Greater Portland Landmarks is Portland's historic preservation, education, and advocacy organization. We actually build awareness of the historic nature of Portland and also the wonderful architecture that tells the story of our history. Does every old building have to be preserved or restored? I think that the beauty of historic preservation is that there is a, a, a really rigorous process about analyzing what's preserved. So in Portland, for example, there are historic districts and these are made up of properties that have been surveyed carefully and also there's a concentration of historic material. So in historic districts there are a number of historic properties that tell the story of an era or in some cases they tell the story of a whole mix of activities that happened in the city. For example, Congress Street really tells the economic development story of Portland, whereas a neighborhood like the Western Promenade is, an, is a one uh, a period of time in which a lot of beautiful buildings and beautiful architecture was created. So within one of these districts, is every building eligible to be restored or, or only some of them? Well, part of the analysis for an historic district is to determine which properties are what they call contributing and which are landmark buildings. And then there are buildings that are non-contributing, so buildings that were, let's say you are in the uh, Western Promenade or the West End District and there's a gas station that was added in the 1950s, so that would be a non-contributing building. Uh, whereas a landmark building might be something like the Portland Observatory or City Hall, a building that has very special stature from its history and also its architecture. And then the buildings that are contributing are part of the fabric or the historic fabric of that neighborhood. So they're, they're part of the, uh, a building that uh, has historic features and architectural elements that fit into uh, what they call the period of significance or the time in which that neighborhood uh, gathered its history. And if you have one of these buildings, must it be restored if you're going to do something to it? Well, in an historic district, there's a review process, so it doesn't require you to do any projects, but when you do a project that affects the exterior appearance of the building, then there's a review process. Often it's very much at the staff level for a small project, but for a large project, there is actually a review uh, committee that reviews the plans for whatever exterior changes there are to the building. And the idea there is to be sure that changes are made in a way that's compatible with the architecture of the building and the, and the history of the neighborhood. But it doesn't necessarily mean you can't do additions or make changes. It just is a way of managing change so that the whole neighborhood retains its historic character. If an owner buys a building, how do they know if it falls into one of these categories? Actually, there's a very detailed study of every building in an historic district. So once you are in a district, you can actually look up your street address and find out if it is a contributing or non-contributing or landmark building. So it's very, and usually there's a very detailed study and survey form, photography. So it's a really interesting way also to learn more about your own historic building. Jennifer, one of the resources that the Greater Portland Landmarks has for homeowners and building owners is things like this trade show. Tell us about the show. The Old House Trade Show is a collection of um, juried exhibitors who specialize in preservation and construction and um, specialists in the field of preserving or working within the confines of an old house. and. We define an old house as a house that's already been built. Um, <clears throat> so they are the ones who know what might be happening behind your walls or know how to uh, fix what might be behind your walls, in your attics, on your basements. Um, it's a really great collection of, of exhibitors. What are some of the challenges in doing something like that, restoring an old house? Where do you start? Well, that's a really good question, and um, we actually have a workshop on that. We have multiple multitudes of workshops today, and our very first one today is all about how to attack your project. Um, where, where do you start? If you have so many things that need to be done, how do you manage that, those projects? Um, and sometimes it's with an architect, sometimes it's with a contractor, sometimes you just know what you want to do, but it's always good to have some sort of resource of maybe how to accomplish those tasks. In addition to the trade show, what other resources does Greater Portland Landmarks have and what resources does the city provide? Greater Portland Landmarks also publishes what's called the Northern New England Preservation Directory, which is a listing of, it's a directory listing of the, some of the same people that are here today. 
Um, and we do that every year. So we even do that on the years of the trade show. And that lives on our website at land, um, portlandlandmarks.org. And um, we have a preservation services program. Our preservation services advisor, Christopher Kloss, um, can come to your home and, and help you work on those projects and help you figure out what you might want to do. There are tax credits available by um, the federal government and the state and um, for homes and homeowners. And the city provides some resources as well, especially if you live in a historic district. There are some guidelines that need to be followed when restoring or doing work on the outside of your home. And are there any other resources that are available that people can use uh, if they just have questions, that sort of thing? Sure. We have some, some resources on our website. The National Park Service has resources on their website. The city has resources. And um, we also have many books available for sale um, that we've published. The Energy Efficient Old House is a workbook that we've done that um, steps homeowners through making your house more energy efficient. Um, which is great here in northern New England in the winter time, even in the, you know even in the summer, but mostly in the winter. Um, and we have another publication called Living with the Newer Old House. So it's um, a publication that covers homes from the 1930s up through mid-century, mid-20th century, and that was done by the Advisory Service of Greater Portland Landmarks, which is a volunteer group. The Advisory Service is also a group of people that can come and help you um, understand your home historically and um, maybe some of the things that you might want to restore in your house, what would be, what's original, what's not, um, and, and you can ask for them to come to your home as well. Heather, when somebody comes to you and they want to restore their house, so they think they want to, where do you start? We typically start with a general walkthrough just to get to know the client and get to know the home. Um, myself and my right-hand man, Dave Cleves, our general contractor, will walk through and um, take note of what you're looking to do. Um, and then we'll go back and we will write up a review and give you some ideas on how we think is the best way to go about that. And how do you sort of judge the possible from the practical? It's very difficult. Restoration, as you know, can sometimes um, bring some surprises. <laughs> um, so, you know, we try to just judge what's the best and most practical way to go about restoring. So, whether that is cosmetic or down to insulation and other items such as that, um, you know, we try to be practical and uh, give you the best solutions. And uh, some people, they may have larger ideas than their, than their building can, can, can take or can handle or they can afford. How do you sort of manage all that? Well, we try to get the full scope of the project and separate individual pieces of the project so that you can possibly, um, if you'd like, do them in different phases at a time. Um, and of course, you do have to be practical about uh, an older home and how much it can handle. So um, usually we'll just work together build some floor plans, maybe a 3D model, um, and be able to walk through the, the plans together and decide what's the best application. What are some of the biggest challenges working with a very old home? Some of the biggest challenges um, certainly can be plaster. Um, some people do prefer to restore the plaster, which can be a little bit of a treacherous <laughs> feat, but it's not impossible. Um, foundations, you know, uh, sometimes can be an older field stone or a brick, may need some repointing. Um, Besides that, there's always some unforeseen unknowns that you may run into, uh, lack of insulation, um, you name it. <laughs> and how do you work with uh, the guidelines if it's in a historic district? Do you work with the city and that sort of thing to be sure that you're following all the guidelines? Most certainly, and Greater Portland Landmarks, I have to say, is a phenomenal company to be able to go to and get resources and um, find people around here that specialize in particular items such as brick, um, windows, siding. Um, we certainly work with the city through every single project and to be sure that we're doing things properly. Is there room in this process for new buildings and new design and new architecture? 
there's definitely room for new architecture in historic districts, and I think you can just go to the old port in Portland and see some good examples. Uh, one example, for example, is the building that's next door to the U.S. Custom House, which is now occupied by CIEE, which is a, uh, uh, an organization that has its headquarters in Portland. So a very modern building with modern materials and modern forms right next to one of the great landmarks of Portland, the U.S. Custom House. And is that a sort of building that 50 years from now that you, you, people will want to be preserved? I would hope so. I mean, one of the goals of Landmarks is to encourage the production of new architecture that is of the quality of the historic buildings. So that really looking at neighborhoods and districts as, as evolving over time. And so the buildings that are built today with quality materials, with good design, those buildings are going to be the historic buildings of tomorrow. So very much so, we, we want to encourage really good new architecture in historic contexts. And if people want more information about Greater Portland Landmarks, where can they go? They can go to our website, www.portlandlandmarks.org, or our offices are on um, the corner of High and Spring Street at 93 High Street, and we'd love to, to have people stop in. We're open Fridays, 11 to 1. We have a wonderful installation that talks about how historic preservation has evolved over the last 50 years, and of course, uh, it's all still evolving, so we look forward to meeting new people and uh, getting more people involved in historic preservation going forward.